If everything in society was decided through games, how well do you think you'd do? Of course, this isn't the first time the anime medium has asked us this question. There's also No Game No Life and unfortunately, uh, no Season 2. But hey, just recently, the patience of No Game and No Life fans was finally rewarded. Not by a sequel or even another spin-off, but this new anime called Liar Liar. The story starts with a young man named Hiroto. He transfers to Amy Academy at the Academy Island where everything is decided through games. As I said, it's like no game, no life. So let's see where this goes. Hiroto gives an introductory speech in front of the entire school where he basically looks down on everybody and claims himself to be better than them all. Remember Yukihara Soma's introduction speech from Food Wars? Yeah, it's like that. But gotta put some respect on Soma's name. Unlike Soma, he's a hack, a fraud. So how could he have given a speech like that? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he's now a 7-star student, which is basically the highest rank you can achieve at Academy Island. Well how? How'd he get 7 stars when he's just a transfer student? Well to find out, we need to go back in time to a few hours earlier. As he was searching for his academy, he came across a girl named Sarasa. She's from another academy. She tells him that he is actually in the wrong district, but is also sweet enough to walk him to where he's supposed to go. But in her mind, she thinks that her boy was just using the directions as an excuse to talk to her, which is understandable. She is the classic red-haired girl after all. Now, as they're on the way, she also tells him more about the system, the mobile device they use, and how everything revolves around the higher ranking students. Now, after she takes him to his district, she excuses herself because she had an orientation to attend. Fate would have it, a grass sprinkler attacks her unprovoked and completely soaks her wet. This somehow leads to her concluding that this whole thing could have been a ploy by this guy. He must have planned it all to be this way. And so after saying this, she challenges him to a staring contest. That's how she'll get her revenge. Well, Hiroto accepts the challenge, but also tells her that once it's over, she should at least hear him out. Anyway, what kind of staring contest are we talking about? There will be facial recognition cameras, and if even as much as your expression changes a little, you lose. It's hard mode, to say the least. She also makes it so she has an edge over him, even brings out a sword to make him flinch. She attacks him with the sword, but he keeps dodging, and when it's his turn, the grass sprinkler does its thing again and soaks her wet for the second time. And since there were other students watching their contest too, she gets flustered that they can all see her underwear, and yep, just like that, her facial expression changes and she loses. Our boy won, so he gets one of her stars. Now, it would be one thing if that was the end of it, but no. Hiroto is then summoned by the headmistress named Natsume. She tells him that he has committed a grave blunder by defeating Sarasa, considering how he's just at the bottom of the barrel, a low-ranking transfer student. While Sarasa, on the other hand, is the granddaughter of the Sionji Corporation CEO. This is a big deal because this corporation is what takes care of the technological stuff at this island. Plus, Sarasa is one of the only few seven-star students on the island. The idea that she's been defeated by a lowly commoner like our boy is just utterly ridiculous. It shouldn't have happened, but it's not like the headmistress is unreasonable. She offers him a simple solution. He should pretend to be a seven-star student as well. After all, it's less weird when a seven-star student defeats a seven-star, right? Like if Joe Schmo beat LeBron James, everyone would go crazy, but it would be less weird if Michael Jordan beat him. It's kind of like that. But can he do that? Can he legally pretend to be a 7 star? And yes, yes he can. It's all thanks to the star he won from Sarasa. It's one of the 15 colored stars, the red one to be more precise, and it gives him the privilege to pass off any lie as truth. Later, Sarasa confronts him and also ends up revealing that she is actually not Sarasa Sayonji, she is Akabane Akabane. But she was entrusted with the task of pretending to be Sarasa, and she's been using the red star for this purpose. But now it's not going to be that easy, considering how she's lost that convenient red star. She does tell him to keep it a secret though, and then Hiroto talks. He explains that the sprinkler was really just an accident, and how he'll be a fake 7 star from here on out. But what are the benefits of being a 7 star on this island? For starters, you get your very own mansion and a private assistant, so sign me up. Hiroto's private assistant is a white-haired beauty named Shirayuki. She fills him in on some info about the Academy Island. There are 20 academies, and thanks to Hiroto becoming a 7 star, the rank of his academy has increased. But this also means that he's the center of attention. There are many who seek to challenge him. But then again, he is a fraud, and so if he actually fights anyone, he would probably lose. 
Well, this is where Shiryuki comes in. She and a hacker named Kaguya are going to work together to help him win games. I take it back, guys. This anime is nothing like No Game No Life. I mean, this protagonist is a complete cheat. But still, let's see if this gets any better. Shiryuki recommends him to accept the challenge. It's from Urasaka, and the challenge is basically about a 100 meter sprint, but anything goes. Urasaka literally brings her amped up motorbike for the challenge. Big mistake. Kaguya shuts down her bike in the middle of the race, thanks to his hacking abilities, and our boy ends up winning by just walking to the finish line. He talks to Akabane again, and she reveals that the actual Sarasa was abducted about a year ago, and she's been pretending to be her in order to maintain appearances. If her true identity comes to light, it'll put the actual Sarasa in danger as well. Hirota states that he can't afford to slip either. He can't leave this island until he finds his childhood friend, whom he's come to this island to look for. The two of them join forces to maintain each other's lies when we see a sus young man interrupting them. It's Seiren. He happens to be one of Akabane's stalkers, and right now he seeks to challenge Hiroto to a game. In the wake of this, Akabane, Hiroto, and a girl named Yuki discuss their next course of action. Now, Yuki is about the only other student who knows that Akabane is just pretending to be Sarasa. I guess you could say Yuki is the kind of friend who would help you move bodies at night. As for the challenger, Siren is a 5 star, and more importantly, he's not a fraud. His games always revolve around cards, and this time is no different. They will collect cards from around the district and then compete in a 5 round card draw. It looks like Siren has this in the bag because he summons 300 fellow stalkers from around the district to help him in collecting cards. They're able to find 16 of them rather quickly. Then there's Hirota. Urasaka from the bike challenge helps him out by going around on her bike to collect cards. She manages two of them, and in the middle of all of it, Hirota ends up getting injured. The game continues for him though. He's going to keep fighting for both the sake of his childhood friend and for Akabane as well. By the way, when Akabane realizes that he actually does care, she reveals an interesting secret. This time she mentions that Sarasa wasn't actually kidnapped. She simply wanted a normal life. That's why she helped in smuggling the real Sarasa to the mainland, where she now lives under an alias. Going back to the game, Hiroto actually has an ability called Rule Breaker to change a rule in the middle of a game. It's all thanks to his fake seven stars. He makes Siren think that he's used his ability to add that the game ends if either of them runs out of cards during the reveal stage. This leads to Siren discarding his cards because he'd rather have another match. But just then, Hiroto reveals that he never used his Rule Breaker ability. So what exactly did he do? Well, Kaguya hacked into Siren's mobile and showed him a fake screen which showed the rule change. He fell for it and lost. Hiroto finally collapses and is taken to the infirmary to get treated, while Akabane wonders if she should ask him about what he meant when he said that she is his ideal woman. Moving on, the headmistress tells Shidayuki that since Hiroto won another star from Siren, he's now an actual two-star. The star he received from Akabane was red, but the one he got from Siren is indigo. The headmistress thinks it'd be pretty cool if Hiroto continues winning colored stars. It would eventually become the first ever all-color seven-star. And of course, he's going to need a lot of help to pull something off like that. Luckily, Shidayuki transfers to his class. Now she can help protect his fraud status more effectively it's also time for an event called Trial Games. As the name suggests, the games are like trials. Done. Any student can challenge any student they want without worrying about losing their stars. At the end, the top five students from each academy would compete in the inter-academy competition. Hiroto is approached by a class fellow named Noah. Shiroyuki warns him that this girl is actually a six star, and she goes by the nickname Little Devil. As you can expect, students from his own academy as well as students from other academies, all of them want a piece of Hiroto. The headmistress also tells him that the green star was recently taken by someone from another academy. That person would definitely challenge him because the green star helps in increasing one's intelligence. As the trial games start, Hiroto is able to avoid useless challenges whilst increasing his chances of ending in the top 5. It's all thanks to Kaguya's immaculate hacking. Now, this was all going really good until Noah decides to frame our boy for sexual harassment, but Shiroyuki challenges him to a game, which he accepts, and the spot for a game gets occupied. Shiroyuki's plan is to lose to him. 
but then Noah kidnaps her and makes it so that they're unable to play. That's not good. If the game isn't completed within 24 hours, they will both lose by default, and the loss will make it impossible for Hirota to end up getting in the top 5. Noah somehow forces Shiryuki into playing the game for real. She even tells Hirota on call that he shouldn't try to win the next game. Anyway, Kaguya and Akabane brainstorm ways to cheat. Akabane also gives him a skill card called Pitch Hitter. The game will have both players with 10 cards each. The cards will have attached skills and values. Whoever plays a higher value card keeps them both. Come on, you know how it is. It's literally just like Pokemon cards. The following day, it's time for a game. Shiryuki still insists that he loses instead of trying to win against her. Whatever. Hirota starts losing. He loses all 10 rounds intentionally, and Shiryuki ends up getting all of his cards. All but one. And what is his final card? It's a card with a skill called Trojan Horse and it helps him steal back five of her cards. The game ultimately ends in a draw, which is perfect, because not only do draws not count as losses, he also managed to avoid winning, which is what Shiryuki was warning him against. But why was she warning him? As it turns out, Noah had installed a virus on Shiryuki's phone, and in case he wrote a one, the virus would have been transferred to his phone and it would have also exposed him as a fraud. That's why the only way out was a draw, but it looks like she still has an upper hand. She tells Hiroto that if he doesn't accept her challenge, the virus would delete Shiryuki's data and she will be expelled. If he doesn't want that, he must fight her and also lose to her on purpose. This Noah girl is really getting on my nerves at this point. So what's the game they're gonna play? It's a treasure hunt. They have to locate treasures, which in this case are Shiryuki and Akabane respectively. They have 10 turns. Akabane helps Hiroto locate Shiryuki, but Noah uses her turn to move elsewhere. She's a surprisingly tough foe, and considering how she made Shiryuki do her bidding in the previous game, Hiroto concludes that she must be using the green star. Its true ability is that it allows the user to alter the perception of themselves and others. Still, Hiroto knows a way to win. All he needs to do is make the game last until 10 p.m. That's when Shiryuki will turn on the air conditioning and show herself, and then Akabane will share her whereabouts with him. And with that plan, Hirota finds her and wins. But then Noah uses her ability to alter fate. So what does that even mean? Well, she presses Control z on Hirota's last move. Her ability allows her to delete his last move. She then finds Akabane and wins. Or at least... That's what she thought. Remember the pitch hitter Akabane gave her? Well, this somehow allows Hiroto to switch places with another player. They make it so Noah was playing the game against Shida Yuki instead of Hiroto. That's right, the one who lost is Shida Yuki, not Hiroto. The virus transfers from her phone to Noah's phone. It deletes her data, and now all that's left is for her to get expelled. I know guys, the plot armor in these games is like nothing else. Now, Noah tells her that her employer is the headmaster of Seijo Academy. He's dangerous, and she also apologizes for what she did. After hearing this, Hirota braces himself to teach that headmaster a lesson. When Noah goes to his office, he starts insulting her for not getting the job done, and also states that he'll make her his slave. Big mistake. Hirota was also there, and he broadcasts the headmaster's words on YouTube to all the other students. And now it's over for him. Next, Hiroto and Noah end up as one of the five representatives of their academy. Noah's not sure if he should be joining them considering what she did, but hey, it looks like everyone has forgiven her. Heck, Hiroto even lets her be the ace. Who are the other three though? Well, we have Shiryuki, Nanase, and Shinji. Other than this, Hiroto goes on to have an oddly refreshing day. He goes on a date with Akabane and then enjoys a bath together with Shiryuki and Akabane. Then there's a meeting between the top five of Amy Academy where Shiryuki explains the first game called Astro. It'll take place in District Zero and basically the team that conquers the area wins. There will be a trading card game going on at the same time and the top prize is a wild card that one can use to join a team as the sixth member. But before that, who will be the commander of their team? Shinji wants to be one, but he also understands that Hiroto is the main character, and so he tells him to eliminate at least three other commanders by the third day of the game, or else he'll be taking over. Fair enough. Following this, Hiroto and Akabane are together when she receives a call from someone. It's another Sarasa doppelganger. She tells Akabane to defeat Hiroto during the Astral Game, and if she can do that, she gets to continue being Sarasa. As for Hiroto, he pleads to Kaguya to lend him her strength during this upcoming game. That night, Hiroto and Akabane and they talk to each other on the phone before going to sleep. In the morning, it's time for the game to start. Amy Academy's team is there. Augmented reality fills the field. 
The gang then experiments a little and discusses their strategy. Ultimately, the first day ends, and it ends with Akabane's Oka Academy holding the most area. Our gang is doing well, though. Later, as they're having dinner, they discuss the other teams, and that's about when Saren enters the chat. Never mind him, it was just there to be annoying. Chiruyuki then tells Hiroto about the players he has to watch out for. There's the Holy Knight Brigade, and then players like Toya and Senri. Senri overhears them talking about her and pulls up to intimidate Hiroto. Akabane pulls up and tells them that the boys would share the room between each other and the girls will do the same. Yep, Hiroto and Shinji end up sharing the room. Shinji's fast asleep, but since Hiroto couldn't sleep, he gets up, takes a bath, and then plays with a young girl named Tsumugi. They play in the arcade and have fun. He basically babysits this little girl. On the second day, the gang comes across another academy's team. It's being led by a man named Kanade. He wants an alliance, but Nanase notices something sketchy and attacks them. It doesn't escalate, but later in the day, Shinji talks down to her for attacking a potential ally and not caring about her own safety. But she tells him to never talk to her and runs to her room. Day 2 also ends with Oka Academy in first place. As for our gang, well, we've collected 12 bases at this point. Though, how about going back to the past to see what's going on with the other teams? It's the start of day two, and we see the teams getting eliminated by their own members. It's actually Saravza's doppelganger. She has the ability to shapeshift into anyone, and that's how she's been taking out teams while looking like a teammate. Our gang decides that they'll always stick together to avoid succumbing to the doppelganger. At night, Hirota visits Akabane. She's a bit embarrassed because she isn't properly dressed, but whatever. Hirota had come to talk about the doppelganger. During the morning of day three, more teams get eliminated thanks to the doppelganger's tricks. Team Amy is sticking close to each other, but there's still some tension between them, especially between Nanase and Shinji. During this, there's a blackout, and when it fades away, Shinji no longer trusts Nanase. He isn't sure if she's not the doppelganger. The tension is so thick that neither Nanase nor Shinji join in the afternoon. They end up getting cornered by two teams. One of them is just nobodies who run when Shiryuki and Noah try to chase them, but the other team is Senri's team. You know, the girl who intimidated our boy at the dinner table. The situation isn't looking good. There are five of them and just one of Hiroto, but he successfully lands an attack on two of them. And when Senri uses her own one-shot attack on him, Shiryuki appears and shields him. From there on out, our gang runs as they get chased by Senri and her team. There are a lot of booby traps too. In the end, Senri retreats with her team. These guys are just too annoying. As for Noah, she successfully eliminated the team she was chasing. In the evening, we see Shinji apologize to Hiroto. There is Nanase listening as well, and it seems she's sorry too. While this is all cool and all, they're getting along again, but then Hiroto breaks the news that he eliminated himself so that their team ends up at the bottom of Miss Hundred Faces' hit list. The the gang then meets up with Suzeron to discuss their strategy. There's Akabani as well. By the way, it's illegal to plot with members of other teams. On the fourth day, he enters the trading card game area. Suzeron is with him as his familiar. She seeks to level up his familiar, gain more points, and defeat Assassin. Kanade meets and greets him, and then there's another girl who offers to give him four of her cards in exchange for a hundred coins. It's a bargain, but in her words, she just wants to see Miss Hundred Faces getting defeated. And if Hiroto's team can do that, so be it. The deal's made, and Hiroto immediately starts defeating others. He was lacking coins, though, so he sells a number card and gets over 90,000 coins, or something like that. This gives him everything he needs to take on one deponent after another. He soon reaches level 27. After Kanade, it's time for him to face the sixth assassin, who of course is Sumugi. He defeats her thanks to Kaguya's hacking support and wins the wild card. With this, he can once again return to the game. Before entering the game again, he wonders if Sumugi is Miss Hundred Faces, if she is the doppelganger. And it's true, she is indeed the doppelganger. Not gonna lie guys, this kinda caught me off guard. Hirota then heroically enters the astral game and rejoins his team. He has a plan. He forms strategic alliances with Suze, Oka, Umi, Nirakano, and Suken. Next, it's a full-on battle between the two allied armies. Hiroti and the others easily overpower the other side. Senri proves to be troublesome, but Nanase and Shinji work together to defeat her. Hiroto then asks her to join them as well. Subsequently, Toya shows up and defeats everyone on Hiroto's side except him and Shiryuki. However, he then gets attacked by his own teammate, Saren. He seeks to join Hiroto. Toya was going to go out, but before he goes, he shoots at Hiroto. Shiryuki jumps in between them and takes the brunt of the shot instead. 
She's done. Plus, Siren shoots himself in the head and gets eliminated. It's always hard to read that guy. Meanwhile, Akabani and Senri are fighting Miss Hundred Faces. Senri tries her classic attack, but it gets countered and she's eliminated. And the day ends. Later in the night, Hirota wants his team to come up with a plan so that they can win this thing. He seeks to propose a new game to Miss Hundred Faces, and it seems that his teammates trust him, so we're all good. Now, while he's contemplating how to get Miss Hundred Faces to agree to a new game, he comes across Sumigi. While hanging out with her, he asks if she is Miss Hundred Faces, and she affirms. She's also a member of that guy Kurahashi's team. He invited her to participate in the Astral game, and since she loves games, she went along with it. Finally, the game resumes. The only ones left include Akabane, Hiroto, and Miss Hundred Faces. Miss Hundred Faces reverts back to Sumugi, as Hiroto smooth talks her into realizing that if they continue with the current game, all of them will be losers, but if they play another game like Crossboard, it'll be more thrilling and fun. Plus, if Sumugi can defeat him in this game, she'll earn the title of queen. Just like that, the crossboard game begins. Whatever happens on the board also affects the astral game. The player who can gain control of the entire board first wins. Goofballs like Siren try to intervene in order to keep Hirota from cheating, but his own teammates keep Siren in check. Kurahashi then calls Toya to make him enter the chat, but Toya isn't interested anymore. Hiroto's teammates catch Kurahashi doing sus things from behind the scenes, while Hiroto himself succeeds in conquering the board. For what it's worth, Sumigi had a lot of fun. Later, Hiroto's teammates warmly welcome him as he returns to the building, and in the final scene of this season, we see Hiroto having a monologue. It started with a lie, but if he just continues with all this lying, he'll ultimately find the person he's been looking for. Maybe the real lies were the friends we made along the way. So there you have it, folks. This was our recap of Liar Liar. Let me know what you think of it. Is it any good? As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.